2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. I'm coming out of the New King James Version. We're starting a new series uh, this month that we'll, we'll see how far we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. I'll wait on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. It's so good to see you here today. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7. It's not even a long scripture. Um, are we there? All right. Let's do something different. Let's read it together. All right. The New King James Version. Look, read the version you got if you don't have the New King James. It's all right. All right. On three. One, two, three. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Come on, that was short enough. We could do it one more time. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Want to encourage you to take notes because note takers are decision makers. The notes that you take today will be your reminder next week. It'll be your deliverance months from now. It'll be your, your healing years from now because the word of God never expires. We're talking from a topic, and for this month, by faith. By faith. By faith. Uh, I laughed when, uh, you know, the Lord gave me this topic because, you know, our ministers ministered last month on grace. And, and so this month we're talking about by faith and how many know that grace and faith are intrinsically related. I mean, our salvation is tied to it. Uh, for we receive our salvation, it is by grace, through faith. Not according to our works, lest any man should boast, but it's, on, it's in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And so we're talking about by faith. And uh, Pastor Marlon opened us up uh, on Wednesday night. And, and he gave us so much that uh, the Lord spoke to me that this Wednesday we're going to revisit what he taught and we're going to have a roundtable discussion this Wednesday. And so if you missed it, go back to our YouTube and watch the, uh, the video. Uh, it's, and so that way you'll know we're going to be in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. All right. He talked about uh, a, a, a fervor, a holy fervor a passion that we should have in our faith. And, and so we're going to talk through that. We're going to make it make sense to us. All right. And so I want to encourage you, uh, if you can be in the building Wednesday, be here. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to just set up everything together and, and uh, we're just going to have a conversation, you know, about how do we put this thing uh, to, to work? How do we how do we work this thing out? So now today uh, is our first Sunday. And, and for those that don't know, first Sunday is what we call Sunday school. Uh, because we teach, we treat it much like a Wednesday night, which means uh, it's going to be dialogue. All right. Now, you may be used to a church on a Sunday morning that somebody comes and they scream at you. We'll maybe do that next week. Uh, but this week, uh, we want to have some dialogue. What that means is that I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to give you the option. If you have questions that you want to ask of the word, that you can ask your question and we're going to deal with it. Is that all right? All right. All right. Amen. So we're talking about by faith. Now, uh, Pastor Marlon gave a definition from the Greek word pistis, uh, but, but I, I want to give you, I, Lord kind of gave me a, a, a little bit more of a stretched out definition of faith that was clear to me and made sense and everything to me. And, and so if you don't mind, I'm going to share that with you. What the Lord said to me is that faith is complete confidence and dependability on the trustworthiness of the character of Christ. Now, wait a second. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I, we in there? We in there? 
Because the substance of things hoped for and the, and, and the things that are not seen are, are still sourced and rooted and founded in the character of Jesus. So you may say that, okay. Faith is complete confidence. Which means I'm not doubting. I'm not wavering. It's complete confidence. I'm sure. I, I wonder, is there anybody that's sure that Jesus will do what he said? Is there anybody that's sure that he who has begun a good work shall perform it until the day of Christ Jesus? Is there anybody that says, I don't care what comes in my life, it won't shake my confidence in him. And see, now, now if, if you like me, we all have people in our life that if they call us and they say, hey, Tere, uh, I'll be there in 20 minutes, I ain't even putting my shoes on. Okay, you know somebody like that too. Got it, got it. Because you don't have confidence in them. I keep telling my wife, I love my wife. I tell them, I said, Tasha, you saved. You got to stop lying. Lying is a sin. I, everywhere she go in California, she five minutes away. It's a lie. It is a lie. Be honest. It is okay. What she's saying is she don't want to wait for you when she get there. That's what she's saying. But faith is complete confidence that if he said it, he won't do it, that he will do it. Complete confidence, watch this, and dependability. So what I have in him, I depend on. It's not just a nice saying, a platitude. It's not just something that I just, you know, it's not my, my Monday post. You know, it's not my hashtag for the day. No, no. It is something that I depend on. I rely on this. If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? I depend on him. We had a song we used to sing uh, uh, back in the day. It said, I'm leaning, leaning on the Lord's side. I'm leaning. And I remember as kids and everything singing that song. And, you know, we couldn't really lean. You know, we had to sway. Because if you lean, ain't nothing there. What's going to happen? You're going to fall. And so the idea that, I ha that, that he is dependable means that I can lean on him and he can hold me up. It means that there's nothing that's going to come in or against my life that I cannot go to him in prayer. And he has an answer for me. So faith is complete confidence and dependability on the trustworthiness. The trustworthiness. How many know that he's trustworthy? He's trustworthy. Well, well, how do you know he's trustworthy? The only way for us to know that he is trustworthy is because we tried him, and he proved himself to be that. I found myself in situations I didn't know how I was going to get out of, but somehow I made it through. And the testimony that is connected to that test, it taught me something about him that the next test that I go through, guess what? He can bring me through that too. I, I shared with you all before, uh, I think I was, let's see, I was in Germany. So I might have been like 13 or 14, playing with something, and I should have been asleep. I think it was my mom's radio. And, you know, this is, this is one of them old school radios that had antennas, you know, before everything was digital. You know, there was a, a, a metal stick hanging out of this box to grab a signal from the airways. And I was messing around with it, and I should have been sleeping. I got it stuck in something, and I couldn't get it out. And let me just be real, John, say, I lied to the Lord. I wasn't saved. It's under the blood now. But I lied to him. I said, Lord, if you get me out of this. Oh, somebody else lied to him, too. Okay. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I'll serve you. I'll bless you. I forgot about it five minutes later. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. But he is trustworthy because I tried him and he showed up. 
So faith is complete confidence and dependability on the trustworthiness, here's the key, of the character of Christ. The character of Christ. Everything that I have faith in is in the character of Christ. Now, here's the thing. We, regardless of what you believe about Christ, we are all, as humans, people of faith. We are. Because none of you tested that, that chair, that, that pew, before you sat down. You sat down with confidence that regardless of what you ate for breakfast this morning, it was going to hold you up. <laughs> that regardless of what that, what that gym life do, it was going to hold, it was going to bear your way. You had confidence in that pew. If you didn't have confidence, come on, have anybody of us ever been in a chair that fell before, that folded? The next chair that looks like that, what we do? <laughs> Legs burning, knees shaking because we don't want to put our whole weight on that chair. It's because we don't have confidence in it. We don't have faith. But we are people that believe. And, and so the, the, the plan of the devil is to get us to direct our faith to any and everything other than Jesus. And so it's important that when we talk about faith, that this is not some generic belief system. Because you can have faith in people. You can have faith in things. Some of you got faith in the, in the, in the lottery. And you pay, your, you pay that $1 scratch off every week. You be playing them numbers because you, you got faith. You know, you, you have faith in your job that if you go to work every day, that in two weeks, you're going to have something in your bank account. You got faith because they don't pay you in advance. So you work and by faith, diligent, on time, over time. What else you need me to do, boss? I'll do that too. People don't like you, but you go there. People talk about you, but you're there. People are manipulative, toxic. Messy, but I'm at work, and I'm willing to overlook all of that because I have faith in what's going to hit my bank account Friday night. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come on back. I'm sorry. Come on back. Don't even go there. Don't even go there. You got me, though. And, and so we have faith, but the faith that the Bible is talking about is a faith that must be rooted in the character of Christ. So faith is complete confidence and dependability on the trustworthiness of the character of Christ. The character of Christ. I need us to be such people of faith in God that it almost makes us stubborn. Are you stubborn? You, do you know people that are stubborn? You probably think about, see, you probably think about your kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> see, the Bible wants us to be stubborn, but, but they use a different word so it makes us feel a bit better. The word they use is steadfast. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. And so we have got to become so steadfast in our faith that when circumstances arise, that challenge the confidence that we have, the dependability that we have, the trust that we have in the character of Jesus, we be like, uh-uh, I'm not listening to you. When people want to say something, uh-uh, no, that ain't in the book. When circumstances, and then let, let's be real, when I start feeling some kind of way, I've got to be so steadfast that I begin to talk to myself. Wait a second, self, get in order. Because what you're feeling is not in line with the character of Jesus. And this is why Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because it is the word of God that talks about his character. That shares with us who he is. 
And so it must be built on the character of God and not just the word of God because what happens if you pray and he don't answer? My faith must not move because my faith was not built on a word. My faith was not built on a sound. My faith is built on his character. My faith is not built on an action because what if I pray and he does not do for me what I'm asking him? Does my faith now begin to falter? No, because my faith with his character. And so this is the confidence that we have when we pray. That if we ask anything according to his will, that he hears us. And if he hears us, and we're reminding him of what he's already said, which is in line with his character. why we have to be people of the book because if we're not reading the book we won't know his character if we don't know his character then we will have no trust in him if we have no trust in him then when we go through storms and diverse temptations we're liable to do anything because we don't we don't have a foundation that's built on his character by faith Okay. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now, I, I want us to recognize one thing, and, and if you're taking notes, write this down that faith is consistent and transformative. Consistent and transformative. It is consistent because what we've already said, it is based on the character of Christ that does not change. And so because his character does not change and my faith is rooted. Going through from day to day. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of who comes in my life or who leaves my life, my faith will not change. My faith won't be fickle because my faith is rooted in his character that does not change. And so because we serve a constant and a consistent God, then it makes my faith to be an anchor. To be an anchor. It holds me down. It keeps me from being moved by the circumstances around me. I, I don't know if you've ever been on a boat, 
But if, you're, if you ever get on a boat, you'll recognize that on a sailboat, uh, they have the, the, the sails up, and the sails are always had to be moved or adjusted for the direction either that they want to go or the wind so that that wind gets behind it and pushes that sail. And so you begin to go wherever the wind takes you. You'll have a little rudder to try to manage, but you're being pushed ultimately by the circumstances. And some of us have smaller boats and we have paddles and, and we're rowing in a certain direction. But there's something about the anchor because when the winds and the waves become to be too much, where they begin to be a threat to the very boat itself, you need something that will hold you against the strength of the storm. So the anchor can't be light. The anchor is not a featherweight. The anchor is something that when you drop it, boom. Because it has to be weighty enough and heavy enough to keep you and everything that is connected to the anchor. Now here's the thing that, 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 that scares me, especially in this day and time. We got too many people that's cutting anchor. We got too many people that will let their anchor down in the water, but because they're impatient, because they don't have what they want, because uh, things did not meet their expectations, they will disconnect the boat from the anchor so they can feel some kind of progress and be led now by the storm. But faith must be consistent. But it also must be transformative. That word transformative, it just means that it has the ability to move you, to convert my situations and my circumstances to a place of agreement. Let's be real. We don't always agree with God. Let's, I, I'll be honest if nobody else. Sometimes God will ask me to do something I ain't feeling. Sometimes God will ask me to say something or be somewhere or not say something or not do something. And my whole insides are just like, mm. Shamika saw it today. It's just like, mm. and I'm sitting here fighting because I heard what he said, but it's not what I wanted. And so faith, if I give it permission, has the ability to say, just like he told me today, Teray, shut up. Keep your, keep your lips closed. Sometimes you say like this, Brandon, take your hind parts to bed. Turn it off. Stop scrolling. Uh-uh. Don't respond to that. Okay, maybe he, I, he talked to me real practical. I don't know, maybe he talked to you like, thus saith the Lord. In the days of the year, no, 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 he don't talk to me like that. He, he, talked, he talked to me real plain. He taught it to be real plain, all right? Uh, because it's tra it, the, the, the design is to bring me, to transform me into the image of his son. And so the reality is I've got to recognize that there are certain days, moments, there are certain times where there is a gap between my will and his will. And I have the nerve, uh, Danae, to read my Bible that's dangerous because when I read my Bible, it number one, it, it shows me you ain't in the wheel. And then number two, it removes the excuses and it gives me a pathway because he orders my steps to get in line. And now I've got to make a decision. Am I going to keep the gap or am I going to go where he wants me to be? And so Pastor Marlon talked about it. That without faith, it is impossible to please him. For to come to him, to close that gap, you must first believe that he is. And then in his presence, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith must be consistent yet transformative. Now, there's levels to this thing. Come on, shout back to me. There's levels to this. See, when you realize that mature faith, did, did y'all catch that word? Y'all catch that adjective? Mature faith. 
See, see, there is an immature faith, and then there is a mature faith. Uh, mature faith has the power to transform. Then you begin to start boldly speaking what faith says. I, I, I wonder, is there anybody in here that has a faith that's strong enough that's, that will say what God says? Matter of fact, let's take a moment. Think for a second. You may be going through something that may be difficult right now. You may be facing something that you've never faced before or, which could be even worse, facing something that you've faced a million times before. What is the word of God about that? And see, faith, as it grows up, cannot just be satisfied living in your heart. Faith has to be shown. Faith must be spoken. And so there comes a point when my faith begins to grow up that I begin speaking what faith says. With his stripes, I am healed. That's what faith says. I'm the head and not the tail. That's what faith says. Now, as you continue to evolve in this faith and grow in this journey of faith, you'll even begin to start speaking over others. Wait a second. I don't know you, but you're going to live and not die. I don't know what's against you, but greater is he that is with you than he that is. Because now my faith is so alive and so mature in me that I cannot contain it with just me. Now, if you find yourself in my ambit, in my circle, in my area, I'm beginning now to speak over you. Because my faith, I have enough faith for others. You remember in Mark chapter 2, there were four friends that carried their paralytic man on a bed. The Bible, he, the Bible said this man said nothing. We don't know if he believed in Jesus. We don't know how he got there. All we know is the faith of those four friends carried them from some distance on a mat, took them to a house that was crowded, found a way to the roof, tore the roof off the sucker, laid them down. I'm sorry, laid them down in front of Jesus. Are y'all praying for me? Y'all not praying strong enough. I don't know where Paul is. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Laid him down in front of Jesus. And Jesus said, according to your faith, the faith of the friends, he was healed. But then there's still even a greater level of faith. Where as your faith continues to mature, that you would now begin to speak to atmospheres and environments. That's the faith that we see with Jesus on the boat where he comes to, to, to the, 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 the top of the boat and he speaks to the wind and the waves that peace. Be still. It's the word of faith. It's the word of faith. Faith, when spoken in the proper context, has the ability to transform what you see into what they see. From what you see to what they see. In, in, in other words, I see it in the spirit. I receive it by faith. I know that God is able, but I have a faith that just will not allow what I see to remain in my belly. Or to remain in heaven. At some point, faith is going to bring it out of the spirit into the natural. All right. If, 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 if you follow with me, if you follow with me, uh, do me a favor. Tell your neighbor, uh, you may not see it now. But it's coming. You, come on. Come on. Find somebody. You may not see it now. I may not look like it now. But it's coming. Come on and put your hands together right there and give God some praise. If you have faith, it is coming. It is coming. Now, let, let me be real because, see, some of us, uh, Proverbs says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And some of us, we get so tired of hearing prophetic words that we're like, I don't want to hear no more prophecy. I didn't been there. I'm tired of hearing about the prophecy because I want to see it. Now, what happens 
If you're bold enough, uh, Minister James, to have a conversation like that with God, and then he throws it back on you and says, well, where is your faith? Why did you doubt? Wait, wait, hold up. You, you mean to tell me you want the hold up? It was, you, you, you mean to tell me that while I was waiting on you, you were waiting? And so that brings me to my point today. That was all just the intro. That was just the intro. <laughs> Look. Look, I, our visitor's like, um, this is my first time. Is he? I promise you, we ain't, I'm not going to keep <laughs> What in the world did I? This man gave a 20-minute intro? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. All right. We going to that Presbyterian church next. And no, God bless the Presbyterians. God bless them. God bless them. All right. So that brings me to my point today. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. See, the issue was not our walking. He is not teaching us how to walk. <laughs> He's not teaching us that we should have faith. We are people of faith. But how are we doing this thing? By faith and not by sight. Now, now, again, uh, James was was all up, all all up in my in, in my pot this morning. You know how you trying to cook something and you know get out the kitchen until the food is ready. And he up here picking my lid up, stirring and trying to stick his finger and everything. Bro, put the lid down. It ain't done yet. Right. He's sitting here talking about, you know, uh, we're going to buy and sell and all this stuff. And, and, and I'm like, he was in my notes. Here's what the Lord gave me. Every government has a currency. Every government has a currency. And the purpose of that currency is for commerce, you know, buying and selling. If you want something, you got the money, you go get it, right? If you don't have the money, we, nowadays, we can trade something. But it is a currency, and as a consequence, a currency assigns a value to it. And so I want this, but I don't have enough currency to get what I want. And so either I've got to either find some other option, see if I can negotiate or go get more currency in order to do what I want to do. Now, when one government wants to buy, sell, or trade with another government, then they must both agree on an exchange rate. Has anybody ever went to another country? And when you go to another country, uh, you will realize that everybody does not use dollars. If you go to Germany, I, I lived in Germany for three years. Back then, they had Deutschmarks. Now they're on the euro. If you go to Japan, they got the yen. If, if you go to another country, they got other, you know, every country has its own set of currency. And if you want to buy and sell in that place, you have got to be able to exchange in order to have the right currency in order to receive the goods or services that you want. Now, this isn't strange. Our kids know about this. Anybody play 2K? If you want to soup up your my player, what you need? Thank you. Currency. VC stands for virtual currency. It, it, uh, remember when Roblox, is Roblox still a thing? Okay. If you want to build all the things in Roblox, what do you need? You need Robux. Currency. Let me tell you, when my son first got his, uh, first got his PlayStation, and we saw a charge in my bank account? I about lost it, Josh. What is this $50? But, Dad, I had to, uh, bro, what? I just pushed this button right here. Uh-uh. Because he didn't realize that that button was connected to a bank account. 
that had currency. And he's sitting up here, you know, I need these new Jordans and everything on my my player. Are you kidding me? I need some more VC for a head then for this jerk. I almost threw the whole system away, Kira. But he understood currency. Now, I bring that up because as believers, faith is the currency of heaven. We have a currency in the kingdom of heaven, and it is faith. Now, if we want to buy, trade, or make an exchange with heaven, guess what? Your money will not work. You need the right currency. That currency is faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to have it. By faith and not by sight. The idea that I can declare with his stripes I am healed is me making an exchange with heaven that even though I feel something in my body because the word says I am healed, then I'm coming to him and I'm going to exchange and use my faith to manifest my healing. Now, if we've never been sick, if we've never prayed that, then we're going to struggle with that level of trust. If all we had was a headache, and we lay in hands, and we praying in the spirit for 20 minutes, and we still going to take five Advil, you are going to have a hard time if you get a doctor's report that says you have a heart issue or that says you have cancer, you might just go right into grief right then because that might be an area where you don't have enough currency to realize the truth of the matter is I understand what you say, but I have complete confidence and dependability on the trustworthiness of the character of Christ. So even though the doctor said this, if Jesus said that, whose report will you believe? Even though my bank account says this, but the word of God says that, whose report are you going to believe? And the reality is, when you try him, you trust him. But let me deal with this both sides real quick, and then we're going to get on out of here. The text says that there's only two ways that we're going to walk. By faith and not by sight. So let's deal with the sight real quick. Uh, I'm, I'm going to run, real through the, run through this real quickly. Genesis 6 and 5, it says, Then the Lord says, or the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually now now let me let me let me bring you in real quick because when you hear evil you may think of death you may think of murder you may think of rape you may think of you know terrorists you may think of child molestation but evil comes from a hebrew word ra which means disagreeable so now that includes lying, deception, not being obedient to him. Now I've got to look at myself and realize, okay, well, you know what? I might say, well, I've never hurt anybody, but am I living my life in agreement? If not, the Bible says it's evil. This is what happens when you're walking by sight. Let me give you one more evidence. Judges 21 and 25. And, and Kira, go ahead and get ready for me. Judges 21 and 25. It says, in those days, there was no king in Israel. 
everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And we don't have time to deal with the book of Judges, but the book of Judges deals with the worst time in their history, in Israel's history. And the clue was, there was no king. Well, there was. His name is Jehovah. They just didn't recognize him. And so because they didn't recognize the Lord as king over every king, they did what was right in their own eyes. You know what that looks like? That's not just a biblical thing. You want me to tell you what that looks like? I'm going to do me. That's what that looks like. I'm looking out for number one. That's what that looks like. When I do what's right in my own eyes, it means I really don't care about you, what you're going through, what you want. I'm going to do what I need to do to survive. I'm going to do what I need to do. So if that means I need to catch, I'm going to catch you slipping or lacking, eh, sorry for you, but I got, to, I got to look out for me. I got, I got to take care of me. And here's what he showed me. He showed me that, again, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we are a people that's walking. We're making progress. But he began to ask me some questions. Are we, number one, are we walking in the right direction? And number two, are we walking with the right company? Are we walking in the right direction? And are we walking with the right company? Because we are supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. So that speaks to our motivation. What is motivating the steps that you take? What is motivating the decisions that you make? What is motivating what you do with your day? Do you find yourself acting one way when it's nice and warm outside, but a different day when it's cloudy and rainy outside? Do you find yourself acting one way when everybody say, yeah, we got your back, and in another way when you can't find any help? What is the motivation? And so I, I wanted to show you uh, an, an illustration. Uh, uh, come, come, on, come on down for me, please. Come on, come on, right, right here, right here in the center so everybody can see. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those of you all that are familiar with this young lady, you will see something that is apparently out of place or unfamiliar. Come on, uh, Gerson, I, I need you to zoom in on the toes. Zoom in on the pedicure, the heels. I need you to zoom in on the heels. Now, I've been a man my whole life. Everybody can't say that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I recognize something with my wife that she will go out. Now, now, women, correct me if I'm wrong. She will go out and she will buy the baddest, highest heels because they just make the outfit pop. They change your walk. I heard they do something for your calf muscles. I mean, it's just a whole thing. I mean, Danae, am I okay? All right. But as great as those heels are, and Josh, as much money as I pay for them heels, now, men, you tell me if I'm, in, if I'm in the house. Ten minutes after we get to the place. <laughs> the heels are on the floor. My, <laughs> she ready right now. <laughs> My, I mean, I long for the days. Now, y'all know, I love my wife, and God gave my wife everything he had to give her, and it came up to 411. I long for days. <laughs> you know, I, I just wanted to God 52. What would 52 look like? What would, you know what I'm saying? Five, one, and three quarters. But God gave a man a vision to create some heels. And she'll come out of that, she'll be, 
Because, you know, the walk change. The, don't act like the walk don't change. The walk changes in the hills. And I go from being here to being here. I'm like, hey. And 10 minutes. And I'm like, wait, but you wanted these hills. You, right. You, you, you don't own them. You tried them on in the store. You made sure you got the little no slip pads in it, you know. You, you got all the accessories. You made sure your toenail was just right. To, you know what I'm saying? You got it right. Why would you go through all that and then little did I know have a backup pair of shoes? See? Thank you. Right. I, I get it. And what she and what and what she's told me, and my wife is saying she can vouch, is that as good as they look, I can only spend but so much time. Y'all can help me preach this right here because they hurt my feet. And I can't do as much as I want to do. I can't go as far as I want to go as long as I'm wearing these shoes. I'm a, you about to get your deliverance in just a minute. Just a minute. Y'all see, she's she been sidestepping this whole time. She's she been up here. She was a back down sing, singer this whole time. I, I don't understand. Oh. But this is what the Lord was showing me. What is hindering our walk? Now, now let, let's take this from, from the natural and let's look at it as a metaphor. Is the reason why our walk with the Lord is inconsistent because we're not prepared, because we're not wearing the right thing, because my hope was built on nothing less than my grandmama's prayers and being forced to go to church when I was a kid. Could it be that I'm having a hard time being consistent in my walk? Because the foundation of my faith is not his character, but my tradition. It's not the fact that I'm sold out to him, but the fact that I need him to do something for me. God, you know, I got a case coming up. And you know, if you just get me out of this. God, I got a bill, man. I got a ticket. I don't know how I'm going to afford it. I'm going to live right until. And we're walking by something other than faith. And he told me to tell you today to change your shoes. Go ahead, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. She couldn't even make it back to the Lord Jesus. She said, right now, this is how I need us to be delivered. I need us to be free. So I can't wait. I need to be free right now. Lord, come right now. Deliver me right now. Heal me right now. Amen. Amen. Look, look, look at it. Look at it. Amen. Shout back at me. Change your shoes. Because it's go time. You, you feel me? We cannot pick up the pace because of what we're wearing. We cannot pick up the pace because of what we're carrying. All right, let, let me take it out of the joke and let me go to the Bible. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, lay down sin and every weight. That so easily tangles you up so that you might run with patience the race that was already set before you. Something is slowing you down, bro. Something is slowing you down, sis. And he told me to tell you today to change your shoes. You know, I was going to name this. I, I, I kept it as by faith, but I was going to, to name this message by faith. By faith. By 
faith. By faith. Because the reality is, we, if we're walking in the direction of faith, if we're walking by faith, we've got to be willing to say bye to something else. If we're walking by faith, we've got to be willing to say bye to someone else. If we're walking by faith, we've got to be willing to say bye. I'm saying bye-bye to something else. You've got to be willing. I got to break up with you. I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't like long goodbyes. I'm, I, it, no, no. It ain't you. It's me. I'm gone. So that I can go by faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. Let, let, let me bring this to another context. Walk by faith and not by feelings. Walk by faith and not by bank account. Walk by faith and not by what's popular. Walk by faith and not by what makes sense. Walk by faith and not by assumption. Walk by faith and not by your preference. Because we should never trust what we see over what he says. We'll get in trouble every time. It'll take us in the wrong direction when we trust what we see over what he says. But faith is complete confidence and dependability on the trustworthiness of the character of Christ. And so if what I get in the mail doesn't agree with what I've heard from him in his word, then I'm going to make a decision by what I've heard and not by what I received in the mail. I'm going to make a decision about what I've read in my Bible and not this text message that came through my phone. I'm going to make a decision about what he spoke to me in prayer and not what they said to me in a mass message uh, on social media. I'm going to make a decision based on who he is and not even just what I have or how I feel. So let me give you one last definition. This word walk. So we've been dealing with it. Let, 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 let's, let's deal with it. That word walk. It comes from a, a Greek word that is actually a compound word. It is the word peripateo. If you're writing that down, it's P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-O. P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-O. Peripateo. And what it means is not just one foot in front of another. It, it, it is a present active plural verb. So it means it's something that you're constantly doing more than once over and over, constantly. And so I said it before, if I take a step and I stop, that's not walking. Right? That ain't, that ain't, that ain't deep. That ain't, that ain't scientific. But walking is a continuous thing. It's a, it's a one after another. It is a plural verb. And when I looked at it, the, this is a compound word that means to trample over, to pierce through, to sting or strike continuously. I said, wait a second. I thought walking was just left, right, left, right. But no, what he told me is when I looked into this Greek word peripateo, that walking is not just progress. Walking is not just covering distance. What he told me was that walking is warfare. What he told me is that every time I take a step in his direction, I'm trampling over limitations. Every time I take a step in the decision for Jesus, I'm slapping the devil in the face. I'm striking him. Every time I make a decision, is there anybody that's struggling with your flesh and say, Lord, help me to crucify my flesh. I got a word for you. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking, keep on walking, keep on walking. Because he, here's what happens. Can I use you, James, for a second? We get in a situation, come stand with me, where we partner with a thing, a habit, a relationship that we know ain't no good for us. It takes us to bad places, and we know it's not the will of God. And so we make a decision, Lord, I want to be with you. 
uh, get off of me and make a decision for Jesus. And when we repent, that word repent doesn't mean to just say, I'm sorry, Lord. It means to turn and to walk in a different direction. But here's what happens. I'm walking. Then I get disappointed. Something happens. And now I'm mad at God. Or now, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like it anymore. And so, yeah, yeah, I see you creeping. And that's what the devil does. He's creeping. He, you know, he, he wants to make sure that... I'm about to give you this mic, brother. <laughs> His, the devil's job, because he, he really doesn't have any authority over you. His job is to take advantage of opportunities. And so, here it is. Friday night, it's been a stressful week, and it was a stressful week, Josh. I mean, man. I mean, a good stress, but still, bruh. And that's what he do. He just, like, you know, I'm still here. I'm still here. Hey. I, I mean, listen, sin is a good friend. He be like, hey, bro, I'm here for you whenever you need me. No judgment. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I don't care where you've been. You can always come home. That's what sin does. And then we get to a point where I'm like, man, I'm tired of fighting. Yeah. You won't expect it that way. Yeah, I won't expect it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and we fall right back in there. And we want to blame the devil. And we get mad because, God, I know better. I know better. What happened? Let, let, look, let me, let me testify. And, and I'm not going to put you on blast. I'm going to put me on blast. Every time. And I'm talking to you as a pastor and one that loves the Lord. Every time that I've sinned, it was not an accident like that. It was because I wasn't walking like I should have been. Can I be honest? Can I be honest and still be your pastor? It's because I wasn't walking like I need to. Because when I'm walking like I need to, he can't catch me. When I'm walking like I talk it. Now, the only access he has is when I choose to come right on back. Because I know where he is. I know his address. I know his phone number. I know his DMs. I got access to him. He, he wants me to come back. Like I said, he's a good friend. He'll never judge. We could be gone for years. We, we, I, I could have broken with him years ago. And I find his number somewhere. He'd be like, oh, man, I was just thinking about you. <laughs> Somebody say, keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. So let me encourage you. And I want you to talk back to me because some of us need to encourage ourselves. So say this with me. Or... I'm going to be better by faith. Come on, say that, by faith. My needs will be supplied by faith. My body is healed. My mind is made up. I will obey. I am an overcomer. I can do all things. No, the Bible says through Christ that strengthens me. But by faith. But by faith. But by faith. By faith. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Listen, I, I know I... I cracked a couple jokes and, 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 and we laughed, but I, but I need you to hear this. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We're going. And, and God is concerned not just about the destination, but the journey. He's concerned about the journey. He's concerned about the journey. If he was not concerned about the journey, then the 40 years it took the Israelites or in the 40 days, actually, to the Israelites to make it, they could have made it there a lot faster. But he knew if he took them the short route, they were going to encounter a battle they weren't ready for. Because he's concerned about the journey. 
I need you to stop complaining. He's concerned about your journey. I need you to stop complaining and criticizing how long certain things are taking and why certain things and realize that he is taking you through certain things to build your faith. He is taking you through certain things so that you realize that it's not by me, it's by faith. That it's not by, some of us need to kill that idol called me. Some of us need to destroy that idol called me because I'm going to think I could do it all by myself, but with man things are impossible, but with God, oh. All things are, are possible. Why? Because I'm doing it by faith. I'm doing it by faith. It's by faith. And some of us, our deliverance comes from casting down that idol called me. I've been trying to do it by me. I've been trying to do what I can afford. I've been trying to do what my history suggests. I've been trying to do what I feel qualified to do. I'm trying to do what other people have confirmed that they will accept me in doing. But God, what is your will? What is your word? I'm here to tell you that faith is so big that it will often challenge your logic. It will often challenge what makes sense to you. It will often challenge your resources. I will tell you, listen, the reason why my wife and I, my family that we're here is by faith. We couldn't afford to come to California. We came here with no job and no house. And to be real, it, it was not a bed of roses. The first three years we were here, we did not have a stable living situation or job. But we made it by faith. We made it by faith. Because we recognize this thing it ain't about us. It's bigger than us. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And, and Marlon, I tell you, I think I'm a smart guy. You know, I got me a couple of degrees, but some things that God tells me to do, it don't make sense. It does not make sense. But he called her to walk by faith and not by sight. As I was praying, the Lord gave me a word for you that as you're walking by faith, what he said is that there's going to be some things that's about to happen for you that are going to happen because of your faith because you believe because you have complete confidence because you're depending on him and no one else some of us God knows he got to really strip us of everything of every option the Lord knows how to get our attention he got to put us between a rock and a hard place where we can't turn nowhere but to him some of us are hard headed like that some of us are but I'm here to tell you, I heard it so clear. He said that there's some things that's about to happen because of your faith. But he said, that's not all. He said, there's some other things that's going to happen for your faith. Something's going to happen for your faith. Because see, some of you are at a place where you say, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. You know, you're, 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 you're like Thomas, and I don't call him Doubting Thomas because this man had one moment. Please, let's not judge people and put a name on them because of one moment. This man followed Jesus for three years. He had one moment where he says, I, I need to put my hand in your side and, and, and in your, I need to feel the wounds in order to strengthen my faith. Jesus didn't rebuke him. He said, here, touch me. Because there's some things that he's willing to do <laughs> for our faith, to build our faith. So as we go through the, uh, the rest of this year, don't be strange when he begins to talk to you and it doesn't make sense. Go by faith. Don't, 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 don't shudder and don't call it a coincidence when things happen that you weren't expecting. He's doing things for you your faith so that we can walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today at the Carpenters Church. To sow a seed into the ministry, you can use our cash app at dollar sign mature in the Lord, or you can mail a check or money order to the Carpenters Church, PO Box 10004, Marino Valley, California, 92552. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us today.